What is going on guys, Jack here and welcome to episode 5 of the Asia 8, here with Haogang United FC in the S League. So I talked a little bit about last uh, episode about how we really have to do well this season. Financially the club's in a really bad way and it is definitely going to be kind of a do or die situation for us now in the league. So anyway, let's take a quick look at our fixtures and how we've got on. Uh, we are now one third of the way through the season, we've played 9 of the 27 games we play in the league. And as you can see here, we are in 6th place uh, and we, we've had a bit of impartial form. We're currently unbeaten in our last 6 with 3 wins and 3 draws. Um, but yeah, things definitely had to change over time. So anyway, we kicked things off with a 4-2 win against Tangzhong Pagar. This was an absolutely fantastic start to the season. Uh, Pagar, of course, won the league last year. This was using the false 9 system uh, with the kind of tick attack esque 4-3-3 uh, three, three with kind of the false nine striker coming into the space. And this game, it worked really well for us. Uh, top performances by the entire team. Uh, we really did play well this game. I was out, out, kind of I was optimistic for the season and I kind of had this new system that hadn't really been tested properly. And so there's always this kind of tiny bit of apprehension uh, that maybe things won't go your way. Um, but going into this game, I, I was I had some hope. Put it that way. Um, I knew it wasn't going to be easy, um, but we did do well here. A four-two win, fairly convincing in the end in terms of our gap. Zay's there with the best bit of defending I have ever seen. In fact, I want to watch that back again because it was that m amazing a, a bit of defending. I mean, this is the thing in Asia. Okay, some of your players have the ball skills of a fucking seal. Look at that. Great defensive header. Um, at this point, I was thinking, oh gosh, it's going to be one of those days, isn't it? Fortunately for us, however, we looked really lethal on the attack. Uh, we got plenty of goals. Oh god, now we're watching the highlights again. Um, but no, this game we got plenty of goals. We played really well. Uh, the wide players cut in really nicely. And obviously to get the season off to a winning start against the team who won the league last year uh, was absolutely insane. Uh, and there was top performances by the players who I thought were going to be key, kind of, I guess, in our season. Uh, I'm not going to show you all the highlights here because they're not really working. But you can get the general gist. You've got to see Zay's header. That was the thing I wanted to, you, you guys to see because it really was special. Unfortunately, on the back of this, we got back-to-back -back defeats against DPMM and the Unicorns. DPMM, in real life, Steve Keen is currently their manager. In this game, we were really unfortunate. 50-50 game, but I did feel like we didn't create enough opportunities um, as, as we could have done, really. You, you look at their midfield, their midfield was absolutely knackered. Uh, so for us to not be able to capitalise on it was very frustrating. And then on the back of this, we then lost 2-1 at home to the Unicorns. This game, again, we didn't have enough of the ball. We got outnumbered in midfield and it was on the back of this that I decided the system had to be tweaked a little bit. So this was an unfortunate defeat. Obviously the Unicorns uh, did well against us last season. They were one of the teams who finished ahead of us in the league, I do believe. Actually, did we finish above them? We were on par with them last year. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, and for us to get the 2-1 uh, defeat at home was a little bit disappointing and tough to take. As I said, I did change my tactics. I'm now trying to remember if I did it after these games or after the draws. It might have been after the draws. Um, but it, as you can see here, we drew against Tampines. Or is it Tampines? I don't know. Answers on a postcode, please, uh, postcard, please. Uh, you can see it. Possession, 39%, not enough of the ball in midfield. We created a fair few opportunities, um, but this was kind of the big problem I had was the team wasn't doing enough with the ball when we did have it, and there were games where we simply got outnumbered in midfield. This 1-1 draw against Woodlands really epitomising that. So on the back of this, I changed the tactic. We stuck with Diallo going slightly deeper instead of playing the false nine up front on his own. And we kind of just rejigged the entire midfield. Went slightly more attacking. Got rid of the anchor man. Stuck with two centre defensive midfielders. And since then, we've been looking very good in the league. We've create, been creating a few more chances. Defensively, perhaps not quite as solid. Uh, but the results speak for themselves. Three wins on the bounce was really good. Um kind of reignited our chances of surging up the table late on here. This game against Geylang, uh, we, it was tough, but as you can see, we dominated the game. We had more shots this game than in any of our previous matches, which was really good. Jerome Baker, the Canadian, grabbing two here. So far this year, this guy really has been leading the charge. Unfortunately, only two goals in four games um, is somewhat of a concern, but Mazerland getting the goals as well was good to see. He's been playing left inside forward for us. 
This guy's been at the club a while. Last season he had a fairly good scoring season. This season he's been doing okay. You know, four assists in five games is pretty solid for a wide man. And um, hopefully these guys can continue it through the rest of the season. Anyway, in this game here, another kind of high one goal scoring win. This game, I'm not sure how they scored three goals, but they did. But again, you can see the chances here. 29 shots, 10 on target. Another game that we really dominated. Had more of the ball, which was good to see. Diallo, uh, the Guinean, getting two goals. Um, Itami Dickinson uh, out on the right-hand side, cutting inside, grabbing a few. And Liam Shotton, who I started this game as target man instead of Jerome Baker due to his lack of goals, uh, got a goal this game. So that was really good to see. Liam Shotton, goals haven't come easy to him since I've been at the club, but to see him grab some there was good to see. Following on from this, second clean sheet of the season, first one away from home, a 3-0 win against Young Lions. These guys were top of the league going into this game. Top, top performance. Dixon grabbing two. Serena, the centre-back, grabbing another. Didn't quite create as many chances this game. Um, I kind of put this down to how they lined up uh, with a 4-3-3 with a defensive midfielder. Really trying to counteract uh, our shape. Uh, fortunately for us, despite the lack of chances we did create, those that we did create we were incredibly clinical with. Uh, Dixon here getting the man of the match. A 9.4 average rating for this guy. Uh, I've had a number of loan offers come in for him. I'm determined to cling on for him because so far he's been absolutely amazing for us. Came on in on a free last season. Didn't have the best start to the season, but so far in nine games, five goals, five assists, one player of a match. Absolutely insane. And then the last fixture of this run of fixtures was against Belstier. It was a 1-1 draw. The first drawing free would have been nice to keep our kind of winning run going. This was a game we dominated, but we did just lack that cutting edge. As I mentioned, Jerome Baker um, hasn't been on top scoring form, nor has Shotton. Maisilan couldn't do a lot cutting in. Uh, Diallo did okay just playing behind. He did grab our only goal of the game, and Dixon contributed somewhat. But it's just this lack of a goal scoring threat heading our attack that's my main concern at the moment. Uh, currently, in our team, Baker and Shotton are the two kind of rotating for this big team kind of advance forward roll up front and at the moment neither of them are on scoring form which is a little bit concerning anyway looking at the league you can see it here uh, the fixtures because of the way in Singapore it works teams seem to just play each other whenever uh, not everyone's played the same amount of games we currently find ourselves sixth uh, at the 30, I guess the third way mark that doesn't quite roll off the tongue like the half way mark but we are at the third way mark um, 15 points here from 9 games we're only 4 points off the pace so the league is still unbelievably close the unicorns are top young boys uh, sorry young lions we beat um, two games ago are in third DPMM we've played Pagar we've played we've played a few of the big teams we're going to have some easier games I hope coming up although really this league's so close that there doesn't seem to be such a thing as an easy game so looking at our overall team performances, average rating-wise, Sorina in central midfield has been an essential part of our game plan. The finances at the club are still really struggling, uh, which is a shame. Um, and it does mean that I may only have this season to do well. But at the moment, uh, Serena has been a real top performer. I don't know if it's a thing in the beta or not, and I'm hoping they might change it. But it does seem like centre-backs get really high average ratings out of nowhere. Maybe that's just me. It's just something that I've kind of noticed. Uh, anyway, looking at the rest of our top performers, our three attacking midfielders really heading this. Uh, good to see them playing so well. That's kind of credit to how many goals we have been scoring. Maisilan, Dixon and Diallo uh, kind of making up the musketeers in midfield playing ju uh, just behind the lone striker. Liam Shotton's played okay in the games he has played. As I mentioned he's only got one goal this season. He's been coming on off the bench for Jerome Baker. Three sub appearances. A 7.4 average rating isn't too bad but he just hasn't shown enough kind of a, of a lethal touch for me to consider starting him just yet. Kelly Young is a good player to see doing well. He came in this season uh, slightly injury prone but I took a gamble bringing him in for £350. So far so good for him. Uh, four appearances, a 7.03 average rating. Has suffered a little bit with knocks and stuff, but besides that, he's been playing okay. And as you can see here, the team's performing fairly well. Morale isn't quite kind of at a peak, I suppose, and it could be better. Uh, in terms of goal scorers, Dixon and Diallo have been the big ones for us. And then in top appearances, Diallo's just been an essential part of our team. He's kind of the player that makes our midfield tick uh, from the centre attacking midfield position. Played up front last year, started at false nine this year, uh, but so far he's really been making that centre attacking midfield position his own. Just a quick look at the finances just so you can see how they're still in the shit. Currently uh, £200,000 in the red. Really disappointing stuff. 
Uh, and yeah, it's not looking very good for us. I've got to be honest. Uh, we, I am kind of keeping an eye open at jobs that might come available. Um, I guess these next set of fixtures are going to be really key. If we can maintain our touching distance with the pack, then we're always going to have a chance at winning the league. But I do, this, this, I don't know. If we can't start scoring with a striker, then I can't help but think that we might struggle. Um, only two clean sheets in nine isn't exactly ideal. And partner with that with the fact that we're relying on our midfielders and kind of wondering to myself, how long can our midfielders keep scoring for before we really struggle? And it definitely is a nagging doubt in the back of my mind. Um, so yeah, that, that wraps things up for today, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed this update. Hopefully you enjoyed Zay's wonderful defending. I would have shown more highlights, but the games, to be honest, like the highlights take a while and they're quite slow-paced. Um, actually, that's a good thing. Let me know in the comments. Would you like me to show you kind of the 3D highlights of some of the other matches? I don't mind doing so. It's just it's a little bit longer and I, I struggle to kind of talk over them I suppose but yeah that, that does wrap things up for today as I mentioned in the FM Basics video that went up earlier uh, on I will be streaming tonight at around 7, 730 ish uh, so yeah go check out my Twitch channel same as my YouTube and yeah that wraps things up for today guys thank you so much for watching as always if you did enjoy be sure to smash the like button if we get 150 likes there will be an episode up tomorrow of this series hopefully you guys are looking forward to that and that is everything guys thank you so much for watching it is me Jack and I'll talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.